the Porsche Carrera Cup North America on IMSA Radio. It's a very, very warm welcome along to beautiful Sebring, Florida, as we kick off the 2024 Porsche Carrera Cup North America season with two fabulous events with a field that is stacked with, well, just talent, to be quite honest. Three classes as ever, and a huge and expectant and knowledgeable sports car racing crowd. We're firing up the flat six four litre engines. We're right in the middle of Florida at the home of Formula One originally in the United States and of course the home of endurance racing. It has been for many years. It's the 72nd running this weekend of the Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring. A brilliant compendium of, of a racetrack that includes long fast straights and technical corners. Hello everybody, I'm John Hindorf. Alongside me uh, is Sheer Adam in the IMSA Global Broadcast Centre. A couple of little changes to talk about in terms of the class structure. Uh, it hasn't really affected anything. Uh, it's just been clarified and we've got one new name, Shay, for 2024. We do. We still have the pro category, which is for drivers who are under the age of 35 as of January 1st, 2024. If you're between the ages of 35 and 55, you are in Pro-Am, so nothing's changed as of there. But if you are a driver who was previously categorized as AM, you are now a Jedi Master. It is the Master. Master's class for drivers who are over the age of 55 as of the beginning of this year. And we have a very healthy grid of 10 Master's cars. All of the cars are identical. It is the drivers who designate where they go. Um, those are mandated classes. If you are one of the Masters and you want to go into Pro-Am, that's fine. If you're one of the Pro-Ams and you want to go into Pro, that's fine. If you're one of the young pros and you want to go into Masters, eh, eh, computer <laughs> says, no, Denied. that's not going to happen. Let's take a quick look at, at the rundown on the Porsche Carrera Cup North America starting grid. We've got 40 minutes on the clock. As usual, making this uh, one of the longest races in Porsche Carrera Cup around the world. Earlier on in qualifying, Chris Palomo captured the Masters pole position in a very creditable 23rd position overall with Matt Holcomb in the 55 ACI Motorsports uh, car in second and John Getz for Kelly Moss in third in pro arm. How about Alan Metney for Kelly Moss? snagging a time that puts him just outside the top 10 of the pros ahead of Marco Cironi in ACI Motorsports number 84 in second and James Sofranas for GMG Racing in third. Lots of new liveries to get used to. We'll talk you through those as we go through the, uh, the race itself. So let's have a look at the top five rows, which are all pro classes. On the outside of row number five, position 10, Jimmy Liebert for ACI Motorsports led the early session uh, in free practice. First time he's led uh, and had his name on top of the timing and scoring. He's got Eve Baltas for MDK Motorsports in the 15 car for company. One row further ahead on the outside of row four, Michael Cooper for Baby Bull Racing. New team to the championship and we'll talk about some more new teams through the course of this race. JDX have Zach Vanier in position number seven in the number nine car. McCann Racing's Michael McCann is on the outside of row three, and he's got Colin Kaminsky for top racing performance in the 77 alongside him. Front four cars has Alex Sedgwick back for a second go, the young man from the UK. JDX Racing, number 98, PT Sports on the side of that car, and he's got Ryan Yardley for top racing performance on his inside. And then on the front row of the grid, what a battle in, perfor in performance and in qualifying for from Gus Barton, who captured second place. Uh, Gus Burton for MDK, the number 20. And Lurk Hart Hartog for Kelly Moss swapped the poles between them as they went through the session, which also set the positions for the second race. So Hartog on pole from Gus Burton on the outside of that first row. A few new teams to talk about, Shay, as we mentioned, as they're 
behind the Porsche safety car on the run down to the final corner. There are a lot of teams coming in to try and take on the might of the teams such as JDX, MDK Motorsports, and Kelly Moss, who have dominated the championship in one form or another for about the last decade. Uh, two things very quickly. My apologies, a correction. The Masters class is 50 and up, so they've actually lowered the bar a little bit. And happy belated birthday to Volker. It was his birthday yesterday, and he's the man in charge of everything. So, uh, Volker Holsmeyer, happy birthday to you, my friend. Yeah, he's done a lot of work. Look at the amount of cars on the grid that will tell you what's happened. There's been a couple of little management changes in Porsche Carrera Cup North America, but everyone at Porsche Motorsport North America, based in Atlanta, uh, have done a cracking job over the close season to assemble a record equaling 40 cars on the grid. Very nearly had 41, but not quite. And I'll take this 40 that we've got. Very impressive field. Being led by Luke Hartog then for Kelly Moss. MDK top JDX, top McCann, JDX, Baby Bull, MDX, ACI in the top 10. And they're all pro cars. And remember, they do line up as they qualified. There's no class split here. 40 minutes on the clock, the green flag is in the air and we go racing for the 2024 Porsche Carrera Cup North America season. What a sight and sound virtually under our, under our feet in the Global Broadcast Centre through turn one for the first time of asking and everyone playing nicely at the moment. But what a jump to the lead for the car that was sitting where? How far back? Well, it was a, a jump start, I believe. Actually, it was changing lanes for Jimmy Libra. We were praising him uh, starting at the back of the top 10, but he did change lanes before getting to the start finish line. Race control will be taking a look at that as spearing off to the left at the exit of turn five into the tires under the bridge is Alan Metney, the oh, number 99, pole the pole sitter. sitter in the Pro-Am class and former series champion. He's done very well not to come back into the full field there. The car has got damage to the front of that car. It's all right at the back, but he's got damage underneath. We stay green at the moment as the teams rush down towards the hairpin at turn seven. And Jordan Wallace, another one of our Pro-Am cars. Oh my goodness. And oh, that he car's now beached. He's beached that car. Now there's damage to the right front of that car anyway, but in trying to get back onto the circuit, the number 23 for Kelly Moss Racing, it has in almost sort of the spiderweb pat pattern has got stuck. Oh, and I think he's going to get that going, but I think when he comes back on, we'll see that the right front is not pointing where it should do. So was he involved then with Alan Metney, who's just gone straight on at the hairpin? Oh, and I think there's fluid leaking from Alan's car. Those are two Kelly Moss cars, too. Correct. Oh, goodness. Not a great start for that team. Uh, well, it was a great start out front as Lake Hartog is still driving green. away from the field. We are still green. And now Gus Burton has been passed for second by Ryan Yardley, a man who Touch. really came into form at the end of last year. He's picking up right where he left off. Yeah, that is the top car that's gone through the 78 into second place. We stay green for the moment. And... I think it'll depend if we get those cars moving. It's a good jump away for Luke Hartog, who rocketed as if fired from a steam catapult from his pole position, 1.3 seconds ahead of Ryan Yardley in second, Gus Burton in third, Sedgwick holds on to fourth, Kaminsky fifth, Cooper, Vanier, Libre, Angel Benitez for FMS Motorsport, then Eve Baltas, Dan Clark to 11th, and James Sofronas leads now in Pro-Am. Speaking of picking up where he left off, James Sofronas running two races last year. They happened to be the two that corresponded with Rensport, and he won both of them. Now, was Sofronas just giving a little push there to Alan Metney? It was Ooh. close, but there was a big, a big touch, I think, for the 23 car for when Wallace. that went around. Yes. He has continued. In fact, both of those cars have continued, is what we're hearing. So we stay green. 99 has gone off again at turn 10. I think Alan's got braking problems on that car. I think the car that was involved with Jordan Wallace was purple, green, and black, in which case it would be Kenton King of MDK Motorsport. I, I'll need to see another shot of it before I convict him of being guilty of any crime, but uh, that's what the initial gut 
response says. We stay in green and they've passed where Alan Metney is off the circuit. So he may be in a safe position there. Let's pick up some of the battles. Colin Kaminsky, top racing in fifth position in the number 77. Comes through with the red, white and blue car onto the middle of the back straight now. Leading the second group of cars and he's under pressure from Michael Cooper for Baby Bull in the purpley pink coloured car behind him. The number nine is Zach Vanier in JDX in the black and white machine. And Zach uh, is actually a driver we're going to have to keep an eye on because he's been racing in Canada and he's been tutored, if you will, by Zachary Robichon, a guy oh. who knows very wow. well how to do well in these championships. So Zachary Vanier, uh, not at the front of the field yet, but I guarantee you by the end of the season he will be. James Sofran has then confirmed as the leader in the Pro-Am category. He's got Marco Cironi, perennial championship contender, just half a second behind him. And then in the Masters, John Getz has come through. John races better than he qualifies by his own admission. He loves racing. and He's got past Matt Holcomb and Richard Edge. Edge what? in second, Holcomb in third position. But why is Mark Fame, excuse me, let me West. try that again, uh, not speaking to Dolphins. Why is Mark Fame <laughs> all the way down in eighth in the Masters class when he is somebody who's won the championship twice? Yeah, and, and what happened to Chris Belomo, who was our pole sitter? Exactly. He's down in fourth in that category all questions that we will try and answer for you in the next 35 minutes <laughs> great battle in uh, at the top four and that is kenton king in the number 74 mdk porsche just waits as he comes back on so he doesn't ruin anybody else's race he's at turn seven very well done he's a man who's got a bit of experience racing in the sprint challenge but he's new to this level of competition and actually he's one of the one who's benefiting by the change to yokohama tires for this season because that's what he's raced on oh. in sprint challenge he was being a bit ambitious there as we go to a full course yellow we are going to see the safety car uh, i think this is probably for alan metney's car uh, or possibly we've got the, um, you know, the 74 car has continued. Yeah, it's Alan Metney's car off uh, on the runoff at turn 10. And uh, it's a long way off the track, but that's a very fast entry to turn 10. The AMR safety team and the Chevy safety truck already there and making sure that uh, everyone is going to be safe thank you to all of our marshals and to the safety crews and medical staff and thank you to diane swintall i love the woman she's always listening to us john hello diane she let us know that mark kwame lost all of his times in qualifying for tp technical penalty 24-2 meaning 2024 second race all qualifying times were invalidated and car moved to the back of the class because the 43 Masters car was found to have a ground clearance below the okay. mandatory minimum. Right height, that translates Correct. to. Okay. Thanks, Diane. And all of those decisions are available on the Alcamel notice board, which is online for IMSA. Results.imsa.com. Easiest way to get to it. And you can see the live timing and scoring that we're watching in the IMSA Global Broadcast Centre and what our colleague Brian Till many years ago termed the dancing ants, which is the uh, the little M&Ms going around the circuit, multicolored dots. Mm. Uh, well, at the moment, they're all in behind safety car number one, being led by Luke Hartog, from Ryan Yardley, from Gus Burton, from Alex Sedgwick, from Colin Kaminsky, from Michael Cooper, Zach Vanier, uh, Jimmy Libre, Angel Benitez, Dan Clark, Eve Boltus and Elias de la Torre are all pros. That's the top dozen who are all pros. They'll be line astern when we restart. There's nobody, no interlopers in there. James Sofranas for GMG Racing is in 13th and leads Pro-Am. Behind him is Michael McCann. So that gives him one car cover to Marco Cirone in the 84 ACI Motorsports car. And that's a, another change of, uh, slight change of livery for Marco this year. Jeff yeah. Morsing. Uh, back in the number 56. Same livery, the one we're used to. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Top of racing. And that's the top three in pro arm. Then there's three pros. Then Pedro, Torres, and Moise Aretsky. And then this Masters battle. John Getz has picked his way through. I suspect there was some carnage going on when we saw the 23 car getting spun out. 
and that then has allowed John Getz to use all his uh, guile and experience to pick his way through ahead of Richard Edge for ACI and his teammate Matt Holcomb in the mystery machine, the Scooby-Doo car. Chris Palomo has dropped another position back for Kelly behind his Kelly Moss teammate in pro-arm, Efren Castro. So he's further back down the field than I would have expected as well. Carlos de Casada in fifth and Scott Blight in sixth in, Marcus, uh, in, in Masters and that takes you down to position number 28. This is our first caution of the weekend because we went completely in, in green racing. in Masters. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So in racing, so we do get to see the beautiful Porsche safety car. If it goes missing, do not check my garage. <laughs> Just putting that out there. It's not blue, is it, by any chance? Uh, it's not Miami blue. No, yeah. that's okay. It's a Porsche. You take that, will you? I would take any Porsche in the world. We are getting a, a review for that Alan Mechney incident. As, uh, as you might imagine, it's going to be very difficult from the pictures that we saw to pull any real evidence out of that. However, I will say race control have a lot more uh, resources than we do. Their room, uh, race control's room, is above us now uh, in the tower, but it extends almost the entire length of the tower, and it is filled to the brim with monitors that gives you screens of every possible vantage point that you could imagine that you would want. Um, perhaps a couple too many. As a matter of fact, a couple of views of camping. I've seen uh, some pictures of some birds in nests, so they do see everything that happens around Sebring. Sure Be enough. warned. John Getz leading the Masters in the GT Silver Purple and Blue car. And for John Getz, it's notable that he is no longer with Wright Motorsport. Oh, uh, yes. He's with Kelly Moss. That's a good looking paint scheme on that car. Lots of people have been busy with uh, the liveries this weekend. Let's see if we can work out what happened to Alan Mechney. Did he lose it on his own? Or was it the four or the 14 that pushed him around? Elias De Los Torres and James Sofranes were together on the track at the same spot and in fact still are. I can't see any damage on the rear of Alan's car, but there was damage on the front. The problem being, of course, that there are all kinds of coolers there, uh, including the oil coolers and the radiators. And it's really difficult to, to see. Ah, who got off on Elias. the... Elias got off on the on inside. The inside, Elias Del Toro, that is in the number four car. He dropped a Michelin tyre off coming out of four, and that put him squirrely. Meantime, further up the field, in a moment or two later, that, I well think that, that was Kenton like King. King. Yeah, but was the contact, or was he just avoiding it? And again, that's very difficult yep. to to see from that. I'm not sure I could convict from that, to be honest. You wouldn't want to be one of the adjudicators right now on the evidence that you have. If, um, and then uh, to King just... Too deep offline breaking. At turn seven and doing a bit of drifting through the grass at turn seven. He got that car going again. The car looks great. It does look good <laughs> in the purple and yellow. I, I The first two incidents... Well, Alan Metney hit the wall hard enough that we've got to have the Komatsu uh, front loader in there to uh, tele loader in there to straighten up the concrete blocks. So I'm not surprised he hasn't been able to continue with that car. And that car is on its way back to the paddock. He's got till tomorrow to get that fixed. The first two incidents, if if I'm looking at that. And if, if that's NFL and I get penalised, I am throwing in the challenge flag on that because from what we saw there, that's a tough call to make for anybody. Who do I we watch? it's baseball season right now or the start thereof. And NBA and hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Everything Ice but hockey. NFL. There is no other hockey. <laughs> it's just hockey. Um, we've got Ryan Yardley who 
manhandled his way up to second before that caution well. came out. Very yeah. well. Switched his tires on well. Very impressive driving so far. So for the driver at the number 78, he's somebody we need to keep an eye on on the restart. And the TCS sponsored car. You mentioned and the tires there. And the tires. A new supplier for Porsche Carrera Cup North America as Yokohama come back uh, to this category. Previous supplier for Porsche GT3 Cup uh, in the IMSA paddock and the conversations I don't think ever stopped in the relationship and the partnership well at least uh, was still they were still having sensible chats with Yokohama and that was done at the end of last year that deal was done Yokohama with great experience of Porsche racing they supply all the tires for the Sprint Cup challenge which includes a class for the 992 cars, but I'm led to believe, Shane, you've been looking into this. The tyre construction and compound for Carrera Cup North America is slightly different from what they have in in Sprint Cup. Yes, yeah, that's what I was told by the teams. But the, the biggest difference is that the springs are different between the two different championships. So even if you happen to have a 992. Just lying around. Just happen, you know, you find it under a couch cushion. You go and you run it in the Sprint Championship. They mandate a lot of different things than we do in Carrera Cup North oh, okay, America. Okay, I see. So they're running different spring rates here, which will obviously work the tires differently. Right, that will work the tires differently, and therefore you probably want a different sidewall uh, or a different construction yes. for the Yorker Harbors. And, and being the first weekend, they've given each of the cars five tires, or not five tires, five sets of tires which across the course of the weekend. Which is two more sets than you would normally get. Two more than normal. And this is only for this weekend. So next time you go to the racetrack, Please read the rule book and recognize you're getting three sets of tires, not five. I can see some people potentially running afoul of that. As the lights are out on the safety car, we're going to go back to green this lap around. Well, this is a global event and being watched all over the world. And from back in Europe and after nine o'clock on a uh, Thursday evening, Dave Alcock is checking in, thoroughly enjoying the great racing from Porsche Carrera Cup North America. Is it me? Are these cars moving around more? On Sebring's notorious bumps, is it tyre suspension settings or the bumps worse? The bumps change, I will tell they you move. that. They move from season to season. But also, as we've just been talking about, it's a new tyre, and therefore the teams are literally getting to grips with them. And it's, uh, it's not just a case of cut and paste your settings from last year. Hashtag respect the bumps or or as it says, because we're reading it upside down at turn 17 at the Mission Food Sunset Corner. The safety car lights are indeed off on that beautiful Carrera white Porsche that is leading the field at the moment. We're hearing that the incident involving Alan Metney and the number four, and that has been identified as Elias de la Torres, will be reviewed after the race. And also that uh, incident that spun round the number 23 of Jordan Wallace, the Kelly Moss racing car, is also under review at the moment. I suspect the reason that that's going to be re reviewed post-race is that they want to see some onboard footage. Bingo. Yeah, and they, that they can't do that. They don't have live footage during the race, but all of the cars in this championship are mandated to have onboard cameras, and they will pull the data cards afterwards. Just under 23 minutes to go, and Luke Hartog will restart. <laughs> oh absolutely airborne over the top of the notorious turn 17 bumps in the middle of the corner to the green flag and it's a run for Gustav Burton. Gus tries to go around the outside in the number 20, the car with the yellow front tries to reclaim second. Oh, he's done the old over and under and he's done it brilliantly. Textbook stuff from Burton goes back into second place. I thought he was being over ambitious there, shit, to try and go around the outside of Ryan Yardley, but my goodness me, he timed that and put his car in the absolutely perfect position. And that puts the MDK Motorsports number 20 back up to second place. That was a beautiful move from Gus Burton. I haven't seen him race before. I want to see more of this because that at Sebring going into turn one, not the easiest move to make, but he nailed it. You might notice the side of his car slightly bare 
perhaps you want to come and sponsor someone who could be a series <laughs> champion. I think Gus Burton just put some pretty good advertising out there. Yeah, and uh, identified the number 74 Ken King MDK Motorsports car as the car involved in that second incident. And again, that is going to go uh, and to be investigated after the race. They'll need a little more time to look at the onboard footage again there. And that's absolutely fair on everybody. If there is something untoward, then there could be a penalty for tomorrow's, for tomorrow's race. We'll bring you up to date with that in our live coverage. Uh, back here on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV tomorrow. If you are listening around the circuit on 100.9 FM, you could be watching IMSAradio.com. Top left-hand side, the drop-down menu, and the first item is... I don't know, this is weird on the radio page. It is live video. Side-by-side -side action. Speedy Dan Clark in, and uh, yeah. Angel Benitez. Yeah. And that is the 64 of Dan Clark. The green car going up the inside. Managed to elbow his way through as Angel Benitez was trying to close him out. And Eve Boltas was right there as well. And he comes through. That was a case of over-defending, I think, probably, probably there from Angel uh, Benitez, as we've also had a car off the road further back. That is the... Oh, that's the Kyle Washington. Kyle Washington new colour scheme on the number 32 GMG racing car. That was on the restart down at turn seven. Uh, he's a little bit dusty, but no other issues there for that multicoloured car. Hartog by almost a second from Gus Burton. Back up into second, he's got three quarters of a second on Yardley in third. That's what's going on at the head of the field. Then another three quarters of a second back for JDX's Alex Sedgwick in the 98 car. Top racing, Colin Kaminsky there. More side-by-side -side action a moment or two ago. Oh, oh and a little bit of Wallace. trading places. That was Jordan Wallace and Again. Naveen Rao getting together as Wallace was a bit slow on the front straight. Yeah, 46 uh, blue car for... Uh, the Naveen Rao MDK Motorsports and Jordan Wallace there. That's an overtake further up the field. For overall position, but not class position, as Saber Cook got around James Safronis nice. and actually left the door open so that Michael McCann could come through too. Michael is a solo car driving by himself effectively for his own team in that number eight, led the first practice session of the weekend and was the fastest time until we got to qualifying. Uh, and that number 37, Sabra Cook car for MDK. For MDK, notice she's changed teams. That's great just to see her back, to be honest. Yes. Uh, in that uh, ease supported car, the white and shades of green car. Huge incident, not of her making at Indianapolis last year. If you were watching us with us, you will remember that one. That effectively took her out for the rest of the season. It did. Uh, with uh, some of the after effects of that incident. She's trained hard to get herself back to physical fitness and she's worked hard to get the wherewithal and the budget together to go with Mark Kawame's team. And welcome back, Sabra, for this particular season. And thoroughly deserving of her position on the grid, running in a solid 13th position at the moment. Pick a car, any car. They're all having a great race out here, how, Jimmy Ebert. How about Dan Clark? You want yeah. to talk about driving angry and being oh, yeah. inspired? Well, after being pushed into the pit wall by Angel Benitez the lap before, he just set the fastest lap of the race, and ah. that is a point. So we need to pay attention to that because two points for pole, one point for fast lap. That's in the shades of green and grey car. Actually, that might be the... GT Silver showing through, which is what the, the colour that the cars are, are all supplied in from Porsche Motorsport at Weissach it's in now Germany. It's now Scooby-Doo leading. Matt Halcombe to the fore in the Masters class. He was class. fourth the last time I looked, so he's Same. gone past Chris Palomo. Uh, no, no, he wasn't. Sorry, he was uh, he was third, but he's got past Richard Edge, and Richard Edge has got past uh, John Getz as well. Chris Palomo, who was our pole sitter, is still in fourth position. And Carlos de Casada is not that far behind in that Masters battle either. Efren Castro is the interloper there, sitting in, be in between the two ACI cars uh, and the two Kelly Moss cars. So there's two ACI cars and three Kelly Moss cars in a line 
from the number 55 back in 22nd position. And that's the battle for the Masters class with Efren being a pro-am car right in the middle of it. A two-time series champion in that category as well. So Efren Castro is a guy who knows very well how this style of racing works. And he also knows that you don't have to win the first two races of the season, but it helps. There goes Kyle Washington through the twisters at the far side of the circuit. The leader is still Luke Hartog. We haven't forgot about that. Here comes a positional pass down into turn 17 as the number 11 of Peter Ludwig tries to go by Carlos de Casada but has to drop back in then bumps. The bumps take him very wide indeed. Did he pull the car back? He did. Scary moment there. Matt Holcomb is absolutely on fire at the moment. He's just gone past uh, Jake Pedersen and up into 21st, holds the lead for Masters in that number 55 with his dog on the front. Zane looks like Scooby, He's but Scoob Zane. He's always going to be Scooby to me. Always going to be Scooby. I think we've answered the question of did Matt Holcomb have his Scooby snacks this morning? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Notice that car uh, in the mystery machine, Van Colors from the... Anna Barbera cartoon, if you're of a certain age, you will instantly recognise that. Got a bit of hippie Porsche kind of styling on that. But he's gone, he's gone satin with those colours this year. Brought them right up the day. Love it. That is a car that most kids would want. Oh, straight away. Love it. I'll take the 43rd model of that. Thank you very <laughs> much indeed. In the he's leading the Masters class, as we say. Um, Efren Castro's gone past Richard Edge. John Getz is still third in that category with uh, Chris Belomo at the front of the field. Luke Hartog has improved and done the purple best lap of the race. Yeah. He's bettered his own best and the overall best second sector, so he's looking to try and extend this advantage as well. But that doesn't mean that second place is screwing up because Gus Burton has done his personal best the last lap around. Unfortunately, the personal best was four tenths slower. All, than of, Luke. all of a sudden, everybody's finding some performance I would say that out of the top 20 more than half of the top 20 probably about 14 or 15 of the top 20 have put in their own personal best times last time around challenge for position the red number <laughs> eight going down the inside that's Michael McCann on Sabre Kirk Sabre gives him room on the inside that's good race craft from both of them they'll come out of turn 17 side by side now Sabre can hold on to this on the inside she gets the best Entry into turn one, but then there's the opportunity for the red number eight to cut back underneath the rear wing. But Sabre stands him up in the middle of the co corner. That's really good driving. McCann goes to the inside. Sabre tries to counter. Just did enough there. Pulled back onto the racing line into turn three. Solid defense from Sabre there as Michael McCann is looking very racy. And that is a battle for position in pro with Sabre in. 13th and Michael McCann in 14th. I am so pleased to see Sabre racing this hard totally after right. that big of a crash because she is showing no fear. This is not just about physical fitness, it's about a state of mind. And this is her first race back in the cars that she had that big season ending incident with at Indianapolis in the last third of last year. Got cleared to drive in the off-season. She's worked really hard. There's a concussion injury, which is very, very difficult to detect and to treat. There's no roadmap to treatment. There is not, and it's very difficult to detect. It's all about how you feel in yourself. And Sarah was very honest with herself and with the medics. She really did want to race, but took the, all the advice she was given. Red a huge had a long chat with her actually at the end of last season she read a huge amount of uh, literature she's doing a great job holding on to 13th position at the moment with the red car with the striped roof sitting in behind that is Michael McCann running uh, for McCann racing not one of the glory teams not one of the glitter teams this is Michael's own operation behind them Cracking battle going on for the Pro-Am lead as Jay Sofranes in the blue and yellow car is now under pressure from Marco Cironi in the Pro-Am battle.
Marco coming to life in the last dozen laps, a dozen minutes of this race, will have saved some tyre performance as Chironi jumps out to the driver's left, turn one, sits back in, on a spin at the final corner. Moisey Uretsky. Oh, Moisey will not be happy with that in his new colour scheme, pink and white. Four-way flashes going on, that is an automatic response from the car and they're clear once the car is happy that you're going in the right direction. Now, did he jump or was he pushed? I suspect this is a bump-related incident. Ah, but Jake it's a Pedersen. bump. It's a bump-related incident from behind with Jake Pedersen. The car already unsettled on the undulations, but it was a touch from Pedersen in the Raiden Racing number 85 that sent Moisey around. I think that'll be looked at as well. Oh yes. Incident responsibility. Mark. For Kvame. Mark Kvame with the number 45. Scott Blind. Well, that one was from earlier on, and that will be a 10-second penalty. That will be added to his race time at the end of the race. Uh, and that is going to make it a not stellar start. We talked about Mark Cironi looking at potentially leading Pro-Am and then effectively going on to try and win the class. He's raced at Sebring the last two seasons in this championship. Best finish second. He's also been fourth, sixth, and tenth. Yeah. So Marco Cironi is looking for a bit of redemption also in his return to this championship after the crash at Indy. Yeah, he was the other side of that. Nothing malicious, by yeah. the way, in that it was a mistake and Marco knows that. But the car, he got the car in the grass and then it was out of control. He was a passenger and unfortunately, Sabra was just the car in the way. She was turning in to the corner, completely oblivious. And we talk about this uh, being a game of inches, a sport of inches here. If she'd been half a second quicker or half a second slower uh, to that point on the racetrack, the accident would not have happened, as simple as that. But those things you are not in control of. But nice to see both of those drivers back. And there is no animosity between them either. We should say that as well. Gus Burton last time around was a tenth quicker than Luke Hartog. Battle for fifth position oh. down at the hairpin at turn seven. Colin Kaminsky holds <laughs> it at the moment for top racing. Michael Cooper, Zach Vanier, Dan Clark. Up to eighth position now, the number 64 car, and they're all battling behind. Colin Kaminsky's experience comes from the open wheel ladder. He spent time in USF 2000, Indy Pro 2000, Indy NXT. Now he's here and he's got Michael Cooper all over his tail, a guy who's been racing in this series a couple of years now. And oh, by the way, has won five SRO championships, he used to be a factory driver for a different manufacturer. And oh, he has a Rolex from winning the 24 Hours of Daytona too. Welcome to IMSA, Colin Kaminsky. Yes. And you're battling, by the way, for fifth position. This yes. is not the battle for the lead. This is the quality that we are talking about for, for the front of the field at Porsche Carrera Cup North America. Penalty has been issued for Jake Pedersen. Incident responsibility with Moise Uretsky. Drive through. That's now, I always say I would never like to be in race control, honestly. That is not the most difficult decision they will ever have to make. <laughs> and and with no disrespect at all to race control, we love them all dearly. Um, I think we probably could have called that, that from here. But the, you know the good thing about that? That's been called quickly, really quickly. It's, it's not going to allow uh, Pedersen to come back through the field, but that shows that they're right on top of it. They're dealing with things as they happen. Down into turn one, up the inside for that pink car around oh, the outside no. goes Zachary Veneer is trying to make the it? pass that is the battle for sixth and seventh Michael Cooper holding on on the inside and here comes Dan Clark in the silver and highlight a colored car and he's going to be able to get through as well I think he's got the preferred line through the left hander but will have to go wide on the right hander who's on the inside of the whole Jim battle there that's Jimmy Ebra isn't it, it in the is. red and white car that was a missed opportunity for Zach Veneer because he tried to go around the outside of Michael Cooper. It opened him up and exposed him to Dan Clark. And now Dan Clark, in trying to get by Zach Veneer, has opened himself up yeah. to Jimmy Libra. Dan, Dan Clark's not finished with this yet. No, hang on. I, no, hang on. I, I, this was my spot, Jimmy. Jimmy, 
Stop doing this. I was trying to overtake the nine car ahead of us, that black and white one. What are you doing? Oh, right, I'm going to have to go around the other side of you now. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> and behind them with a grandstand view is Eve Baltas for MDK Motorsports as off at turn number seven, Carlos Di Caseda. Di Caseda. One of the finest livery changes I think we've seen in the off season. We're used to seeing Allegra Motorsports cars running with green and white and yellow. Carlos has gone full on American with a silver, red, blue and black car. It's two offs uh, in recent times. It was turn one and then turn six. Oh, he got help at turn six. And I'm afraid it's Kenton again. It was Kenton King, but where was he supposed to go at that point? He was on the wrong side of the track. We've seen him have braking issues there before, probably wasn't slowing the car down enough. Carlos de Casada is not a driver we see make very many mistakes. Kenton King is not True. a driver we know very well yet. True enough. Uh, in the battle for the minor positions, fifth on down, Kaminsky still in fifth place for top racing in the 77. Crosses the line now. Just under six minutes to go. Uh, then it's Michael Cooper. Then it's Zach Vanier. Then Dan Clark. Jim has got back ahead of Jimmy Libra. Those two are having a conversation, I'm telling you that now. <laughs> the 15 car... In the car right now, they are. They're talking to each other without uh, talking to each other. Yeah, they're talking to each other, just the other one can't listen, can't exactly. hear the other side of the conversation. Yeah, absolutely right. Then the black and yellow car of Eve Baltas for MDK Motorsport. What's Eve's story? Uh, went over and did some Super Cup racing. Uh, decided to come back to racing in North America. He's a North American by birth, uh, lives in New York City. And this whole experiment running over in Europe was because of COVID. But now wow. he's finally able to back race in North America. Now to the Pro-Am lead, James Sofranas and Marco Cerrone still running together with behind them, uh, Madeline Stewart for JDX, the number 15. That car is one of the pro cars. Madeline is someone who's actually got a great deal of experience racing in Porsches down under, Kiwi. A lot of experience with Earl Bamber Motorsports, actually. She ran the Porsche Sprint Challenge last year, third in the Pro-Am category, and she won the Porsche New Zealand Scholarship back in 2021, ran Carrera Cup Australia in 2021. So she's not a stranger to Carrera Cups. She owns a gym on the Gold Coast, actually. So it's pretty cool to get to see her come over and run in North America in the big leagues this time. One of my favorite places to spend some time up on the Gold Coast or the Hunter Valley, further down New South Wales. That Sanctuary Cove is a place I've been to a couple of times and enjoyed it up on the Gold nice. Coast now. It's very nice. Love the Australian lifestyle. Not been to New Zealand yet. That's a big miss, I've got to say. Still having a cracking battle for sixth position as Michael Cooper in that. Purple car is under pressure now from Zach Vanier. The JDX car gets the outside. Now again, we'll try to cut back and get to the left-hand side of the racetrack after turn one. The opportunity's there. The door's been left open and a little bit of a slide by the 88. Cooper covered across now. Was that blocking? Was he moving in response? Efren Castro's had damage. He's got rear bumper components he's that been are off hanging at 17. off. He's oh, been yeah. Massively off at 17. And he's, uh, he's thrown the front splitter off that's just been run over by. Uh, that's the new multi multicolored car, isn't it? Uh, of uh, the GMG racing car of Kyle Washington that w ran over that little front splitter. So that's both of them. There ours. it is on the racetrack that is a piece of rubber that fastens onto the bottom of the bottom of the splitter and it's absolutely essential to how the car runs Ooh. it was rear first for Efren just slightly too wide almost at the exit of turn 17 kissing both ends of the car with the tire barrier but able to continue around but that's both of our pro-am champions we've only had two in the three years finding trouble in today's race another bit of work for uh, race control panel as there's an incident between Carlos de Casada and Kenton King. And Kenton. Oh, yes, of the course. One that we that saw was at down at 7. Yeah. It's just a warning, which I think is fair. Yeah. And that was for Ooh. Carlos. 
The uh, battle for the lead is shrinking, John. Yeah, down to 1.4 seconds. It's Luke Hartog maybe just with two to go. He'll get the white flag next time around. And Efren Castro off the track once again does He's not have the downforce levels no, that he would exactly. be expecting. He, the car is completely unbalanced with that little piece. Oh, oh is there something on the track? Because some, there's another car going off there. That is the uh, number 91, the red, white, Javier uh, Ripple. black car. As the white flag is out for our leader, well, there's a certain symmetry, a new season, new cars, and we are hearing fluid on the track. It's turn... 10. Uh, uh, was it turn 10 or turn 13? Maybe both, actually, because there's been spins for Carlos at... Uh, for Yeah, for the 65 car at both of those. Efren Castro. Efren Castro, excuse me. So a new season, a lot of new teams some new competitors but there's a certain symmetry in that a kelly moss racing team in the racing for children's color is at the front of the pack are we seeing the script of the season being written already as luke hartog kelly moss keep finding these young drivers victoria and andy working so hard with the rest of the team battles going on down the field for pro Am down at the Hairpin at turn seven, the blue and yellow car leads for Jim's Sofranas. Marco Cironi wants this win here. He does, and this is the battle for the less young drivers, but they're still young at heart, as James Sofronis with the special Mobile One livery on his GMG Porsche wants to get the first win for them at this weekend. But Marco Cironi wants the fairy tale of his return to come back and complete this win, finally, at Sebring. He's never yeah. done it here before. The gold decals for Mobile One, 50th anniversary for the first all synthetic motor oil. On the Ullman straight, the gap has reduced. It's just over one second, but this has been a display of confidence, a display of speed, and clearly a display that is setting the tone for the season. Even now, we've seen this before with the cars in this colors. Kelly Moss wins again, and Luke Hartog opens his account in the 2024 Porsche Carrera Cup North America with just on a second, but a second was enough. That's all he had to do. Gus Burton second, Ryan Yardley third. Will we see those three battling all year? I suspect so. In the categories, here comes the battle through turn 17 for Pro-Am. James Sofranis has held this position for a while and he will take it ahead of Marco Cironi. And again, I suspect we'll see these two drivers battling through the season with the Masters cars coming through behind. Matt Holcomb gets it ahead of a recovering Chris Palomo, who started in pole, dropped to fourth, finishes second. Richard Egg in third, by the way, in Masters. And at the line, Pedro Torres got ahead of Jeff Mosing for third in the Pro-Am class. So at the very last exit of turn 17, that's where the speed changed and Mosing dropping down to fourth. Yeah, by half a second. Quick little bit of math. It's easy. Luke Hartog leads yeah. the way of the championship <laughs> because he swept everything. The win, oh. the fastest lap, and the pole position. That is the perfect trifecta. The full house, as it's sometimes called. 28 points. 28 points. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Now, on the last lap, a couple of spins for that number 65. It already had some damage. And I, I suspect that after the contact at turn 17, uh, was dropping oil. Might have spun on his own oil, actually. It's not un unusual for Porsches to do that. My goodness, that was a scary moment as the second car came in with Javier Ripoll uh, for the FMS Motorsport machine. That all went on behind the winners. Congratulations to Matt Holcomb, who snags the first Masters top step of the podium for ACI Motorsports. In the pro category, Hartog, Burton and Yardley. Watch out for Alex Sedgwick and Colin Kaminsky as well. Michael Cooper fought hard for sixth position ahead of Zach Vanier. Dan Clark well inside the top 10 ahead of Eve Boltras and Jimmy Lieber at making up the top 10. As we go further through in the 
pro am positions. James Sofranes in 15th ahead of Marco Cironi and Pedro Torres nicks it in the run to the line ahead of Jeff Morsing for the third spot on the pro am podium. And the Masters class leader on inside the top 20 at 20. Uh, that was Matt Holcomb ahead of Chris Balomo in 21st and Richard Egg Jean 22nd. John gets uh, relegated back down to fourth position. Problems for some big names and some experience here. Tom, Tom Balamis, Carlos Di Casada and Alan Metney, the biggest of the big names. A championship contender, we would say, for sure in that number 99 car in Prague. Finishes stone last after heading into the wall just after the bridge. Well, what a way to get things uh, underway for the Porsche Carrera Cup North America for 2024. 40 cars started, 39 finished, and we'll do it all again tomorrow. Congratulations to our, all of our class winners, and particularly to Luke Hartov and to Kelly Moss, who start 2024 exactly as they finished 2023 by winning. <laughs>